Hi, my name is Matt Reisinger with Reisinger Homes. Welcome to my video blog dedicated to building science and fine craftsmanship. I want to talk about practical advanced framing on this video, but before we get to advanced framing, I want to show you what standard framing looks like. I'm in a 1950s house that my company is doing a deep energy retrofit, and this is all the original framing on the house. This is uh, two by fours that were framed in the 50s. You can see these two by fours are in 16 inch centers, and interestingly enough, this house had an addition uh, added about 10 years ago, and the framing on the addition, besides the lumber looking a little yellower, um, looks exactly the same. So let's walk back and I'll show you that. And then we're going to talk about a few of the things that we're going to do differently for advanced framing. So number one, this house, two by fours on 16 inch centers. Look at these uh, headers on here. These were the headers that were added about 10 years ago when these windows in this addition was framed. A ton of lumber in those headers. Lumber does have some R value, but it's quite minimal compared to the, uh, the foam that we've sprayed in those, in those cavities. And then lastly, I want you to notice uh, this three stud corner. This is a traditional three stud corner and um, we've air sealed it. That's what this gray caulking is right here. But, uh, but really with a three stud corner like this, we have basically no insulation in that corner. Now my spray foam contractor has drilled these and tried to add some insulation there. And we've also done some rigid foam on this project to help with that. But I wanted to show you what standard framing looks like and some of the issues that you come across when you're, when you're framing fairly standardly. So now let's go out to a new construction project that my company's building and we'll show you what practical advanced framing looks like. Advanced framing. If you've not heard of advanced framing before, the idea is that there's so much lumber in a house that actually most houses are probably overframed when it comes to uh, the amount of two by fours, the amount of lumber or structure in the house. And so advanced framing is about reducing the nuts, the kind of the amount of lumber in the house in a smart way. So what I'd like to focus on today is kind of practical advanced framing. In this house, we took an approach that, that is not quite all the way, um, but I think really makes sense for most people that are building a new house. I'm here in Austin, Texas. Uh, this is a cooling dominated climate. We do need some insulation in our walls, although not nearly as much as some other climates um, like the Northeast or in really cold climates. But I do prefer to frame all my houses with two by six exterior walls. And one of the first things we want to talk about when we're talking about advanced framing is the distance between the studs. These studs here, these two by sixes are in 24 inch centers. So it's 24 inches center to center on these studs. Most houses are framed 16 inch on center and that's unnecessary. 24 inches on center is plenty. A couple things about that that I do want to mention. I'm a big believer in a full exterior sheathing on the house. So you can see here we've used OSB um, on the outside of the house. I'd actually prefer to use plywood. So I did use um, pressure treated plywood on the first two feet of my house. We're on slab on grade construction here. So this is a cement slab we're standing on. So at the lower part of the grade, pressure treated plywood in that area, which is a little more vulnerable. Then we switched to OSB from there up. I'd prefer plywood, but um, we just didn't have it in this, in this particular project's budget. You can see how our floor joists up there, these are uh, two by four trusses that we've used for floor joists. Um, they've landed on a stud um, nicely. And then our headers, actually let's paint over here and show you one of the headers. Our headers are mainly uh, timber strand engineered headers. I'm a big fan of these. We do have a few LVL headers in some other places, but when we frame with a two by six exterior cavity, that header fits in basically a two by four space. And so it leaves us two inches um, from that outside face of the header until we hit our sheetrock. And if you look over here, we've started to insulate this header cavity. And that's one beauty of two by six framing is now I can use uh, insulated headers. So this is one layer of three quarter um, exterior rigid foam. We're gonna add one more layer of three quarter and then a half inch plywood on top of that and then everything will be nice and flush. And that will actually be an R10 header, which is fantastic. The second uh, very important point on uh, advanced framing, if you uh, scroll over to this corner, is how we do our corners. If you pan around here, you can actually see on the inside of this corner here. This is something that's uh, commonly referred to as a California corner or a two stud corner. You can see that our stud is way back here on this corner. And then we've added this stud, frankly, just as a uh, drywall backer. That could get eliminated in flavor of uh, drywall clips, but I'm just not sold on that process. So we put a stud in there. And then we're gonna do a total fill installation on this cavity. I'm actually gonna use Owens Corning Energy Complete. So this entire cavity is gonna get R19 
uh, packed full of a blown in blanket. Really good insulation system. On the outside of the house, we're doing uh, three quarter inch rigid foam. So that's uh, just a brief rundown on advanced framing. And again, the two most important things in my mind are going to 24 inch centers, doing these California corners. And then if you can switch to two by six construction, it makes a big difference. Uh, really like exterior sheathing. And last, when we install drywall, I really prefer to use five eighths inch thick drywall instead of half inch drywall. A lot of advantages to that. But the big one is when we go to advanced framing on 24 inch centers, it's a much stiffer product. And we typically do smooth wall uh, in all our houses. So we have very smooth drywall. We're not using texture. And that five eighths rock, uh, sheet rock is much stiffer gives a much straighter wall and looks better in the, in the finished product. And when we're going to 24 inch centers, I think that really makes sense to use that 5 8 sheetrock. It also ends up with a, a little bit of a quieter house because we've got a, a little bit more mass in our wall cavities. I think that's about it. Thanks for joining me, everybody. And if you're building or remodeling, please think about doing some, some practical advanced framing in your project. It makes a big difference. We're going to pack a lot more insulation in this house than if we would have done standard framing practices. And ultimately, there's, there's a benefit to both the builder and the client and saving uh, some of that additional lumber that wasn't really necessary. Talk to you soon.